and welcome to the third episode of Film Stop. Um, thank you for everyone who's been listening to us and has come back for this third episode. Truly, truly appreciate you being here and uh, you know getting started with us as we take this journey. And um, always appreciate feedback. You know where to reach me. You can reach me at uh, Suraj1912 um, on Instagram or Suraj S. Prakash at Twitter. So the first two episodes have been mainly about um, me and Gully Boy. This third episode, we're gonna go a little about uh, go a little west, I guess. Um, we're gonna talk about Green Book, and then I have a guest here. Uh, if you remember from the second episode, I had mentioned that from time to time I'll bring in other people, other guests who can talk about uh, things that might be in the zeitgeist, topics that are being discussed with content that's out there, movies, films, documentaries, what have you. Uh, so today we're going to talk specifically about ba Black Panther and um, its Best Picture nomination uh, at the Oscars this year. And for those of you who don't know, Oscars are coming up. They're next weekend on Sunday. That's uh, February 24th. And uh, that starts at 7 p.m. on Feb 24th. Well, so let's start with the first topic, which is Green Book. So Green Book is the story of uh, Don Shirley and uh, Tony Lip, and it's based in 1962 when uh, Don Shirley, um, a world-class African-American pianist, um, embarks on a concert in the Deep South and uh, has uh, Tony Lip, um, a tough-talking bouncer, drive him and protect him while he goes through this tour. As is with most Best Picture nominees, uh, Green Book is um, in many ways uh, geared towards a certain audience, a certain sec section in the Academy. And when you watch Green Book for the first time, it's enjoyable, don't get me wrong, it's enjoyable for the first time, but you can't help but notice the, uh, I guess, sure cliched nature of their approach to the subject. So w when I say that, I mean, there are notes in the story that are pretty, you know, similar in any, um, any similar, uh, I guess, story about two friends from, or two people from different walks of life, um, spending time together and realizing how they're really not that different, or if they are different, how they complete each other in the friendship of each other, or in some cases, uh, love for each other. In this case, it is friendship, so it is a journey of two f two strangers who then become friends, and that's that's pretty out there in the trailer. So if you think I'm spoiling anything, um, screw you, I'm not. Um, <laughs> but it, the the core of the story is one that we've seen before. Um, the movie is enjoyable, like I said, but has this. Um, the sense of um, white person take towards the story, and I, I I I say that knowing well that I am not an expert on these topics, and it's funny because we're gonna talk a little bit more about a very similar topic later. But it, it's it's not an enjoyable movie in the sense that you're not gonna take something home from it and and you know mull over it and learn something from it, and I think that while that is not a barometer by which good movies are to be judged in many ways. I do think that that's a barometer by which we're uh, judging this movie against all the other uh, Best Picture nominees this year. And in that sense, I do not think that the movie has what it takes to to make it to the top of my list of Best Picture nominees. Uh, on the other hand, I will say that it's well directed by Peter Farrelly. I think he from a technical standpoint, the sequences within the car are very well shot. Um, often we see these sequences kind of mishandled where you lose the value of the dialogue. If there are two people in a car, especially when one is in the back and one is in the front, you kind of lose the connection. Um, here, the dialogues work really well, and I think that you can give a lot of that credit to the way it's been shot. And, um, of course, the way it's been edited, too. I think the cinematography by uh, Sean Porter and the editing by Patrick J. Don Vito is, is very well sort of uh, complementary to Peter Farrelly's uh, vision as to what he was going for. 
again, I think where you lose some of the complexities in the subject and and what they were going for is in the writing. Um, the interesting thing is, and it's a fun fact, the story is, is mainly written by Nick Vallelonga, and Nick Vallelonga is the son of Tony Vallelonga, Tony Lip, who plays, who is the driver in the movie. Um, that makes me think of the performances. The most brilliant part of the movie is, uh, in my my humble opinion, uh, Viggo Bortensen. Viggo imbues Tony's character so perfectly. And, and if you've seen any interviews of his um, outside of uh, the movie, you know that he is a completely different person than he's playing, than that he's playing on, on the screen. And that's great if you've seen Captain Fantastic. I can tell you that, uh, you know, it does not surprise me that he, you know, has such a power-packed performance. And again, Mahershala Ali, we all know that he's he's great. He's great in pretty much everything he's done. Um, the last movie that I saw of his was Moonlight, and he was great there too. But in this one, I think he, he tried to reach a chord that is deeper than what the subject provided him. Uh, nonetheless, great performances. I don't know if they're if either of them are worthy of winning an Oscar because for the best supporting actor I think Richard E. Grant from Can You Ever Forgive Me um, and uh, for you know uh, Viggo Mortensen's um, category I think Christian Bale and then Rami Malek are both very strong contenders. I'm uh, I'm digressing, <laughs> and you'll notice this that when it's about Oscars, I constantly digress. Um, coming back to Green Book, all in all, I think it's a it's a one time watch, and you know if you have the time, um, watch it in the theaters. Otherwise, you can just wait for it to come on video on demand and and watch it then or one of your uh, million streaming services that you have. But that's my take on Green Book and. Uh, Let's dive into the second half of this podcast with uh, Black Panther. So, I'm assuming by now you have watched Black Panther. If you haven't, then you probably live under a rock. Um, And please do watch it. Uh, I do think that it's one of the better superhero movies out there. But today, I'm not going to be reviewing Black Black Panther. Um, What... I and, and a friend of mine we're going to talk about and, and really just discuss is Black Panther's nomination at the um, Academy Awards for this year um, for Best Picture and not just Best Picture, a multitude of other nominations, but mainly mainly about Best Picture. And, and really the question here is whether Black Panther deserves to be nominated for Best Picture or is it just a nod to... Uh, the social sort of fulfillment that the Academy members feel by nominating uh, a movie that is um, speaks to the African American culture and is full African American cast and crew. I will preface this entire discussion by saying that we are no experts and uh, by no means is what we say um, exclusively important or, or significantly valuable, but this is our our take on it, our opinions, and um, of course, feel free to chime in through comments, through messages, emails, um, and uh, before I go too deep into that tangent, I'd like to introduce my friend, my very close friend, uh, Bo Zhang. Bo is uh, someone I've studied with, and we share a lot of uh, a lot of interesting discussions about movies and, and culture, but uh, I'd like to have him introduce himself, actually. <laughs> Hi, how's it going, guys? My name is Bo. I met Siraj in school, and we talk about movies a lot, mostly about how Siraj's opinions are bad. <laughs> now, uh, but from my personal taste, I, I will say this: I-, I don't watch nearly as many movies as Siraj. It's not necessarily the center of my life, but it is something I definitely enjoy. Uh, my favorite being uh, "Once Upon a Time in America," Sergio Leone. Woefully underrated movie, but I digress. Not what's important here. What's important here is the topic of Black Panther and our opinions on it. And the nomination, more importantly. 
Yeah, and and to I guess to get us started, I, you know, again, I'm gonna preface this by saying that we're just going to um, discuss this and have and hopefully have um, a, a cordial dialogue. Um, at some point, we might get explicit, but <laughs> um, I will uh, I will try to bring in this conversation back into where we're what we're trying to really discuss here, uh, just in case you have forgotten Black Panther is the story of a superhero from the Marvel Universe and we are really just talking about the one that came out last year I guess there is no other Black Panther movie that's come up but but let me start by saying um, what was your sort of sense of the movie did you enjoy it what was your overall sort of view of the movie oh sure like the vast majority of Disney's Marvel movies uh, yeah, it was an enjoyable ride. I uh, really liked it. Um, you know, in terms of where it ranks in the MCU as now, I would say uh, maybe at the 60 to 70th percentile. So, you know, it was in the upper half, I'd say. Uh, yeah, it was a good time. I thought it was well done. I don't have anything against it per se. I just don't think it in of itself necessarily warranted a Best Picture Oscar nomination. I thought, for instance... Um, Avengers 3 was uh, honestly a much better done movie overall so but I mean okay so that raises a good point right I mean, what do you think is worthy of a best picture nomination then hmm, that's a good question so you know to a certain extent you could say it is a comparative question within a, any particular year um, but what I just said you know in my judgment uh Avengers Endgame was probably a better movie. And I mean, a better movie... You mean Infinity in... War? What did I say? Endgame. <laughs> Infinity War. My mistake. Uh, it, it was probably a better movie in a more holistic sense. Like, so, Black Panther was good. It was enjoyable, but it didn't leave me feeling particularly moved one way or another. I was like, oh, that was neat. Uh quite frankly, like most of Marvel's movies. But in Infinity Wars, I mean, when I walked out of seeing that, it was like, ooh. And, and uh, disclaimer, I watched it a little bit after everyone else, so I kind of knew what happened. Mm -hmm. But still, even then, I walked out of it going, oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, that just happened. And the fact that I, you know, it's like the Titanic story, right? I know what happens going into it, but I'm still moved by it. That is more significant than what happened to me when I watched Black Panther. So, you know, regardless of the rest of the field, that fact in of itself, I think, it speaks to the fact that, that if we're talking about, you know, what is really the best movie in a year, um, I, I don't see necessarily how that it warrants a nomination. Again, not saying it's not good, it's just not the tip-top. So, uh, you know, talking about the Best Picture nominations, just to kind of read the list out real quick, um, there's Bohemian Rhapsody, there is The Favorite by Yorgos, Lan Yorgos Lanthimos, uh, Black Panther, uh, Black Klansman, uh, Green Book, Vice, A Star is Born, and Roma. My opinion, and I'm going to go back to the first question, which is uh, Black Panther and, and just the overall view. Um, I really enjoyed it, and similar to you in the sense that I don't know if it was, you know, my favorite movie of the year. I actually do know it's not my favorite movie of the year. Um, I don't think that, that that stops it from being a Best Picture nominee. Now, let me add to that real quick. Um, I do also agree that uh, Avengers Infinity War was a, a, a great, enjoyable ride. Um, but I think that when I watched Black Panther the second time, I kind of, I kind of realized that there was a lot of undertones that I overlooked, and a lot of the undertones were to do with the way Ryan Coogler depicts. Um, or chooses to depict Wakanda and and the real question that the movie is raising you know when when someone has so much um, is it fair for that person to keep it to themselves um, while the rest of the world burns you know to keep themselves safe or 
should they share it with the rest of the world in order to sort of equalize things? And that's really part of a bigger question. What are your thoughts about that? Well, yeah, I mean, I saw that. I only watched it once, but I did see that in my first watch through, my only watch through so far. Uh, but I'm not saying there was nothing going on in it, but, you know, let, let's break that down. Um, so, what? first of all, what you said in terms of it not being my favorite movie there, but that doesn't mean it doesn't deserve a nomination. Agreed. However, I'm saying it's not even my favorite movie in a particular category. And therefore, mm. uh, that gets a little hard if my favorite movie in the category... And I think most people would kind of agree that uh, it might have been a better movie. Now, um, to the second respect, in those undertones, I mean, I, I realized they were there, but I thought they could have been done better and more cohesively because here here you have and for those of you who haven't seen the movie spoilers obviously <laughs> um, spoiler yeah. so T'Challa and uh, Michael B. Jordan's character Killmonger they have this obviously the, the obvious conflict which is like okay hey I want to kill you and be king nah I don't want to die okay fair <laughs> enough but then there's the undertone which is Michael B. Jordan saying I want to export Wakanda to the world in a way to, to help it in his view and you know it might be a twisted view or whatever uh, but it was still there and yet for most of the movie um, T'Challa or Black Panther he didn't really have a a counter position to that and at the end of it he kind of went with it just with a more subdued hey let's not kill everyone while we're doing this but he did it anyway. But the fact that he didn't have a counterpoint to the whole thing, it, it, there, there was no synthesis mm -hmm. there, right? There was, you know, to have a proper argument, you need a thesis and an antithesis. That mm. didn't really exist there. And for me, that was, that could have been much better done. Mm. Uh, go ahead. So so do you think that the flaw was, was really in the writing for it? I think there was a lot of it. I mean... Mike, like I said, Michael B. Jordan, uh, his character was Killmonger was entertaining, but you know, for me, the most compelling, well, that's maybe not compelling, the most entertaining performances uh, were Winston Duke, uh, Mubaku, mm. could be saying it wrong, the, yeah. the big dude in the mountains. Yep. He was a joy every time he stepped on screen, and uh, Andy Serkis being the crazy mercenary. When those two stepped on screen, I knew I was in a good time. And that's not to say anyone else was bad, per se, but nobody else stood out. Mm. Uh, the writing was decent. It was decent, but it was okay. By the way, um, as an aside, for me, the whole uh, South Korea sequence, it could have been 15 minutes shorter. I mean, I thought they drew it out for the spectacle. I understand we like spectacle, but it was a little too much spectacle and not enough substance. So, like, stuff like this combined to make it a less tight and focused movie than what I would like. Whereas if you look at um, Avengers 3, I don't know what I could have taken out of that movie and the movie still work. And that, to me, is not necessarily sufficient, but at least it's a sign of a really good movie. So, so I mean, we can argue how good or bad it is from a subjective standpoint all day long, but the other part of this is that the movie did just, I mean, did garner more than just the Best Picture nominees. Uh, so sure. it did garner the best music, um, written for motion pictures, uh, best costume design, best production design, sound editing, sound mixing, and and to me, and an original song, of course, and to me that speaks more than just the sum of you know, it's parts. It's 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 really about the fact that um, it's not just about the writing or the performances, but the movie as a whole um, was technically as brilliant to be up there in the top fives of all these different departments, and and that has to say something about about its um, about its brilliance. I mean, when compared to all of these hundreds of movies that are being manufactured every year. Well, you see, and this is where I have to give my counterpoint, as not necessarily a movie nerd, per se, but someone who really enjoys and uh, likes to discuss movies. For me, the movie is all about the human emotion and the story within, right? So, the sound editing and all that, I'll be honest, I have to Fair. watch it again to really judge that. Um, 
But for me, if you don't have somewhere in terms of best actor, best director, screenplay, something like that that really serves the story, I don't know. I think that's a clue to me. It's like, something's not quite right here. Why are you there when almost all the other movies have at least one of those elements nominated? Mm -hmm. And here, there's not. And I don't want to get into, you know, like doing a game theory analysis of, you know, why it might be up there or whatever. But, you know, my point is it just, it didn't wow me on those factors. And for me, you know, the the technical aspects should be serving those elements, not the other way around. And if that's the case, I don't know, I don't, I don't quite get it for me. Well, fair enough. Uh, but, I mean, let's address the elephant in the room, right? I mean, the social impact of the movie. Black Panther is a full uh, African-American or majority African-American cast and crew directed, of course, by Ryan Coogler, who's the director of Creed. Um, and it is really a movie that I don't, it's not the highest, but it's the top two um, for the Marvel Universe, over a billion dollars international. And that that to me tells more of a story of a social phenomenon. So, so in that space, you know, my question to you is how much of a mo- how much can you really, um, uh, I guess, m- not meter, but gauge the the value or the impact of a movie by just your subjective viewing? Because there is something about to be said about the impact of cinema, and if if a movie is having a very strong impact on the zeitgeist and it's a good one, it's a really good one on the industry and of course the society, shouldn't that be attributed to the movie and its value? Yeah, I mean, from a business standpoint, absolutely, I get it. It's a success, that's great. I'm not taking anything away from that. But my view is that to a certain extent the art should stand for itself almost. And that's probably not worded the best way it could, but let me give a counterexample. Uh, my favorite movie in the entire world that I have ever seen, Once Upon a Time in America, flopped at the box office. Granted, there were some issues with the theatrical release being blah and the actual original cut being uh, just a masterpiece. Disregard all that. The point is, I think it's a great movie because it's a great movie, not because of whatever effects it might have had. That is separate. That's a whole other thing. It's not an unimportant thing, but it's not the same thing. And if we were to judge a movie based on box office receipts or what the perceived right or wrong effects from a societal standpoint might be, then, you know, if you go back in history through the whole Academy Awards, then not saying it hasn't happened before, but it it just, it creates a skewed view, I think, of what best movie to me should be right the best the art should stand distinct from that or else it's not you're not saying it's the best movie you're saying it's the movie with the greatest effect or whatever else that you want to but you're isolating the uh, you're isolating box office and and uh, business from social impact and and what i said earlier that's not what i said i said i'm isolating that from what the movie is and for me, a movie is a piece of art. But a piece of art is 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 one that is socially relevant. Is that one that speaks of, is a mirror to the society, or is one that is actually um, inciting some revolution, or is one that is uh, is speaking of, of times of change? I'm like throwing all of these like phrases out there, but sure. but that's the that's the essence of art. And in that sense, I mean, you can't deny the effect that. Uh, Black Panther has has had. I mean, not to not to mention a little kid, little African American kid, seeing an African American superhero up there, and and the story being told well. Um, let's say it's not the best told story, even, but it's well told story, well enough for that kid to believe that okay, I am of value, and this is. I mean, there's a mirror to me or a mirror to my society that's of value. But but like you said, he can get all that from the fact that you know, it grossed over a billion dollars, right? That everyone's talking about it. It doesn't need that, right? So the question, you know, the, the question above this is like, what should 
best picture awards or whatever else mean in context of society right should it be recognizing those things or should it be pure to the art form i mm -hmm. think for me if you don't have something that it at least tries to keep art in of itself uh then you know there's there's so much other influence out there already and like why try to mix it up i mean we can we can all kind of make up our own minds we're adults here mm -hmm. for the most part some of you might be kids i don't know um so I, I think there's a function there and it's not by giving it this nod that i don't think it deserves in this context it's not really helping anyone you think it's diminishing the, the either sides so like the cause, um, the cause being the social relevance, and and on the other side diminishing the value of uh, best picture nominees or even the Academy itself. Both. Both. If you give something to someone who does not deserve it, it cheapens it not only in terms of what is given, but also it cheapens their experience. I mean, this is also part of a bigger conversation, right? I mean, you can talk about quota systems and you can talk about reservations and you can talk about all of that stuff because really where you're going with this is that, I mean, we're taking the subjective part of out of this conversation, which is whether or not Black Panther is a good movie or is one of the best movies. It's a good movie, mm -hmm. but is it one of the best movies or not? I mean, that's a subjective part that we're taking out. Now you're going into this because... It, you're not right from the standpoint that the academy functions in a certain <laughs> in a certain way uh, i mean the academy has um definitely a pr problem they definitely have a problem uh, of you know two years ago the uh, oscar so white uh, function and and the fact that they needed to to alter their entire academy or not the entire academy but a big part of their academy to bring in more diversity and inclusion uh, of course, those things are there, but why would I think that any of that is actually leading to a negative result if, at the end of that, uh, I'm getting a Black Panther or comic hero movie that is uh, African-American um, uh, crew and cast being nominated for Best Picture, giving another, another African-American uh, the ability to direct a movie that, that could possibly go there and become one of those. See, or... I, I'm not against any of those things that you mentioned in and of themselves. You know, the Academy tried to be more inclusive, the Academy bringing new members into its base. I think those are positive things as you describe them. However, this is something a little bit separate, right? This is, if we take it for, if we, if we acknowledge that by itself, Black Panther is a good but not great movie, not great, great, right? Um, then you're, you're, you're diluting, uh, you're still, you're not taking away the uh, fact that you're then diluting the value of what that means for quite frankly, both parties. Um, and I have to go back to the idea that nobody's going to ignore that Black Panther made a billion dollars, right? And, um, you know, any idea that black people can't make successful movies or whatever gobbledygook that bullshit is, um, that's out the window for good. So what is the Academy saying if they're trying to give it the nod like, what does that do? Like, what does that um, do beyond okay. a billion dollars in so, sales? So, 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 some, some context to that point, right? Okay. Earlier this year, earlier, I guess, 2018 now, um, Academy uh, opened up another uh, category calling it the best popular film or popular picture. Um, and, and no one really knew what the, that meant, what was the definition of that. And uh, the other hand, uh, you know, movies such as Black Panther and Crazy Rich Asians, um, they started, the, the, the producers and also the zeitgeist, they started to feel like that was a, a kind of a cheapening of sorts, you know, just saying that, oh, we can't give you the main prize, so here's a consolation. Um, and so Academy backtracked and said, we'll take that out, and there's going to be just one, uh, one main category for best picture, and they kept they kept that and then you know lo and behold the academy nominates black panther there do you think that they should have kept the that as a best popular film nominee and perhaps black panther could have been a part of that so let me flip that on you uh do you think 
if they had capped that, that Academy would have given Black Panther the Best Picture nod. Because I, I think that gets reframing the twisting the question a little bit on that. I think gets to the more the core of the issue, right? Is that they're too like by by releasing that in the first place, the Academy is saying that in their mind it's too maybe related, but fundamentally different dimensions, important dimensions, but different. So I don't know. Based on what you just said, I didn't follow the news that closely. Sounds like there was some politics involved. Sounds like there was some handshaking, but they try to make everyone happy, and I'm sure some people are happy, but I'm kind of like, uh. Well, but do you think that that would have been a, a better path to take? In some ways, well, I don't like the way they worded it, best popular picture. I mean, I kind of get what they were trying to get with that, but they probably could have done that a little bit better. In the spirit of it, so like yeah, a, there's something there. So acknowledging the more business side of things? Not necessarily business, but uh, maybe in terms of... maybe Not maybe not just business, because then it becomes a box office race, and we already have that. But maybe recognizing social impact or you know how it, well mm. it embodies a particular idea or movement. Mm. I mean, I think that's valuable. And you can make that valuable in a way that doesn't disparage it. Mm-hmm. So, that would be my criticism to you, Hannah. So, I mean, that's that's a fair point. Um, uh, you know, I will say this, that the, the Academy, um, as they nominate, they're bringing in multitude of factors into nominating. I mean, one, not the least of which is uh, drop-in uh, viewership and... and and, you know, these things, we're talking about these in an isolated way. We're, you know, we're dissecting each of these separately. But they're all sort of, it's a confluence of things. It's, it's the fact that it's a good movie, maybe not great. It's a good movie, a very good movie, perhaps for some. The Academy losing viewership. They needed needing to bring in a popular sort of film category. While well, popular film category not working, bringing in a popular film in the main category, maybe. Um, the Academy maybe compensating for its lack of diversity or uh, compensating for its lack of diversity in nominations. Um, it, it is a multitude of things. I think that my core difference from you is in how much I, I think that the movie is good because I do attribute a lot of the social impact to the piece of art itself in this case. Um, and in that case, I think it is actually one of the movies out of the list of eight movies that has had if not the highest, one of the highest significant, like, social impact. I, I would argue that Roma is maybe another one. Um, but uh, last thoughts, because I know we can talk about this forever. <laughs> um, this is a an, an never-ending conversation, and I know uh, we're getting close to about 30 minutes on this on this topic. But uh, what are your last thoughts, Bo? Yeah, no, I think it was uh, taking it back to the top. I think it's a good movie. I think by the Academy doing this, and it's not the first time they do it, Let, let's acknowledge that. Not for this particular reason, perhaps. Um, <laughs> it's it's not the best path, and it's not the way out of this fate of obscurity or whatever it is that they see. Um, there's larger issues at work, and going back almost a little bit on your principles to a certain extent, right? Because they backpedaled. Mm. That's not the way to solve that. So, you know, I'm a marketer. My whole thing is be really good at being whatever it is that you need to be. Uh, don't try to please everyone. So, you know, my, my criticism still stands, I think. You know, we can agree to disagree on this particular point. I think it's a good movie, not a great movie. Uh, and I don't think it should have gotten the Oscar Best Picture nomination. Well, on that note, the fact that I couldn't change his mind does not surprise me. Um, this is this is um, an often sort of uh, pass that we are at. Uh, but I do appreciate you being here and discussing this with me, and hopefully we can have you back. Uh, and thank you for all your <laughs> great uh, input and ideas. Guys, thank you so much for listening to us banter. Um, it's quite late here, and we're... We're probably still going to continue this dialogue after this uh, this ends, but 
again, thank you so much. And just a quick uh, sneak peek into the next episode, we're going to actually discuss about expectations from this year's Oscars and uh, the Best Picture nominees, as well as Best Actor, Actress uh, Supporting and uh, in the main categories. So hopefully you can join me for that discussion. And as always, follow me on Instagram at Suraj1912. Twitter at Suraj S. Prakash, and you can email me too at filmstop.podcast at gmail.com. Once again, thanks guys. Good night.